Hello, I'm Didier Stevens, the senior handler at the Internet Storm Center. In this video I'm going to show you T-Shark. T-Shark is uh, the console version of Wireshark. I wrote a short diary entry about analyzing uh, malware in a pickup file with uh, T-Shark and my tools. T-Shark is the console Wireshark and command line Wireshark. And this is uh, the command here that I explained. I will explain it later in this video in detail, but this is the output that you get. So the, the shellcode is extracted from the capture file and uh, it is recognized as Cobalt Strike shellcode. Here you have the IP address, the port, the path and the user agent string. Okay. So now let's look into detail how I did this with uh, T-Shark. So I wrote this diary entry as a quick follow-up to Brad's um, diary entry about an Excel spreadsheet that uh, pushes uh, system BC malware. And uh, somewhere in his article here, as uh, Brad always does, you have pickup files, uh, screenshots of, of Wireshark. And I was interested by this one because here I see shellcode and it is also encoded in a way that can be easily decoded with uh, my tools uh, base64 dump and that is what i explained here in my diary entry so with t shark ex extracting the shell code and doing the analysis so first of all we need to use t shark T-Shark is the command line version of Wireshark. So I have installed here Wireshark on my Windows machine. It's in program files, so it's uh, the 64-bit version. And there I have T-Shark. This is the T-Shark command. And when I run this command, just like this, it's like running Wireshark and saying capture, like this. So it is capturing here. Okay, let's cancel this. It is capturing here on this VMware network adapter, VMNet 8. And you can see some packets, ARP packets. Why is T-Shark doing that? Well, if you don't give it any option, it will just start capturing and displaying the packets, the overview of the packets that it see. And which interface does it select? Well, it's simple. It just takes the first interface in its list of interfaces. And with option capital D, you can get an overview. Here are all the different interfaces on my machine. And this one is the first one. So that's what T-Shark used. I can, of course, explicitly provide an interface like this loopback here, number 10. So interface number 10. And now we are capturing traffic on the loopback. If I do a ping, for example, here you can see the ICMP packets. Yeah, let's cancel. When you do this, the the packets are captured, but they are not written to disk. They are not written into a file. If you want to capture this with Wireshark and write this to a file, then you use option W. And let's say, for example, capture PCAPNG. PCAPNG is the default format used by T-Shark, just like Wireshark. And now the capturing is going on. Let's do a ping. Here we have our packets. Let's cancel. So now we have a, a capture file. And this is a capture file that you can actually read back with T-Shark. For that, you use option R, read, capture. And here you see, 
for example, the ICMP packets. Yeah. And that's what I did with uh, Brad's PCAP file. Uh, because Brad always shares uh, PCAP files of the malwares that he analyzes. So with T-Shark, I'm doing a read of that um, capture file where there is a system BC infection that uses COBOL strike. Like this. Now there are a lot of packets in here, so this will take it some time. An overview of all the packets is displayed. Okay, and that's the end of the packet capture file. 9199 packets. So that's a lot. You, you cannot work with a capture file like this. You, you have to filter it just like you would do in the Wireshark. And if you want to uh, apply a display filter, you can use option capital Y and then just type your Wireshark filter, like HTTP. So a display filter to just see the HTTP connections. And here, for example, one of the last ones is a get to system BC. So that is what Brad explained in his diary entry. This is a get request for the Cobol strike shell code. And also at the beginning here, you, you have another one, get system BC. I can filter on that by saying, okay, if in the URL there is system BC, I want you to display the packet. Now for that, you need to know the exact field. And that is something that you can look up in Wireshark if you don't know it. So I have here in Wireshark the same capture file open, get system BC. Here I selected the URI. And then if you look at the bottom here, you can read http.request.uri. So that's what we need to use in our filter. HTTP request.uri contains system BC. And I'm going to put this between double quotes because it is one value for option uh, Y, but it contains spaces. So I need to enclose this in double quotes. And now you see, I just guessed the two get system BCs here. You can see that URL is a bit different. This contains here that I did here in this example is case sensitive. Just to show you, if I do uppercase BC, then I get no hits. Okay. Now these are the gets. What we actually want is uh, the reply because that's where the payload is that we want to analyze. So this is the reply. Here. And if you go down here, this is the payload and you can see that um, here this is in field HTTP file data. And it starts here with backslash XFC. So I'm going to use that as a filter. So HTTP dot file underscore data contains XFC. I'm not going to type the backslash here because that is more difficult to get right here in the console. So I'm just typing XFC. And now here I have my two replies. Of course, I want the payload, so I want to look inside. And now you can use option upper, uppercase V to get the complete tree view like this. So for each packet, you get a complete tree view. Uh, so here we have this frame, Ethernet, IP, TCP, HTTP, 
and the line based data. So that is what we want. Now, unfortunately, this is truncated here. We want a complete shell code. And that's something that we can do by not using option V to get the complete um, dissection, but to specify the field that we want with uh, option E, lowercase e. So HTTP file underscore data. That's what we want. Now, if you do this, you'll get an error because you need to provide another option to explain how you want the fields to be uh, displayed. For example, in JSON. Here I'm just going to display the content, so I'm going to use this option, uppercase T, fields. Like this. And now, as you can see, I get the complete payload and I only get the payload. So at this point now here, I can analyze this because that is something that my tool base um, base them 64 recognizes, so that's an encoding. Now, if you run this without any options, uh, nothing will be detected because by default, base64 dump looks for uh, base64 code. Here, the encoding that we want is backslash x hexadecimal, and that is known as bx here, encoding bx. And here it found the payload twice because we have it twice. And as you can see also the hash here is the same. So the content of these tw two is the same. So the get uh, URI was uh, slightly different, but the reply, the payload that was sent is uh, identical. What I'm going to do, since they are the same, is just select the first one and do an ASCII dump. And here you see an hexadecimal ASCII dump of the shellcode. You can recognize here a user agent string. And here at the end, an IP address. Now, seeing the port here is uh, more difficult. For that, you can use my tool 1768. That tool, it's a cobalt strike analyzer. So we just pipe binary dump of that shell code into my tool. And then here, if we scroll back, it has extracted for you the C2 it will connect to. So this IP address, its license ID, the port 443, the part that will be used and the user agent string. 